It's been an interesting pre-season. A lot has happened. We've overhauled the squad, sorted out the finances. The media once again has us as favourites to win the league. Can we start off on a good foot today with a win versus Solihull Moors in today's episode of Walks to the Prem? Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we've got episode number 16 of the Kingsley Walks to Prem Save here on Football Manager 2020. And yet we're starting off season 3 with a game against Solihull Moors. As well as that, we're going to be going through the finances because my gosh have I sorted out the finances we're going to go through transfers, the friendlies we've played over the summer, the tactics that we're going to be playing for at least the first few games of the season and all that other good stuff that you get on the first episode of a new season. And before all that, I do want to give a quick apology. I know I did say in the last video we was going to do a season review of season two, but uh, I watched it back. I recorded it last night and it's not good. It turns out I don't understand most of the graphs, most of the stats that you get in the game. So it's basically 25 minutes of me rambling about stuff I don't really understand. I have still got it saved. So if you would like to see it, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, if, if enough people want to see it, then I will release it. It could be funny watching me try and talk about stuff I don't understand whatsoever. So yeah, like I say, if you want to see it, let me know down below. And yep, so first things first today, what shall we do? Let's have a look at finances because I'm really happy with what I have done with the finances over the summer. Some of you might remember and you might know that we was minus 200k in the red at the end of last season but as you can see now we have really sorted that out look at that i know i said i don't understand graphs but i understand that that means good that means good basically and yeah we've gone from minus 200k up to 1.1 million pounds we brought in 1.3 million over the summer but somehow i'm still over my wage budget because what's happened is the wage budget was calculated at the end of last season when we was still 200k in the red and it's not been updated since then. I've been looking and looking and looking all summer. Pretty much once a week I knock on the chairman's door and I see if I can ask him but there's no option to ask him to improve the wage budget. Look I'll even show you. Oh. Oh. That's new. That's literally the first time that's been there all summer. Oh, okay. That's proven me to be a liar. So, what shall we say then? Uh, da, 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 da. We can redo with a bit more flexibility. Oh, he's not happy with that. Um, I can see the club being left behind. Yes! Ha ha! Hallelujah! He has seen since, and he has up he has updated the ways budget. Oh, what's it gonna be now? Am I am I still over it? What is the ways budget now? It's gone up to eight point five. So I'm still I know I'm not over it. I'm ninety five quid within it. Hallelujah! Ninety five quid. Ah, oh, yes, that is good. Ah, oh, that, that is a big relief. Because all summer, we've been over the ways budget. I think at one point, I was like 1,100 quid over the ways budget. And so, yeah, that is very, very nice to see. And now, let's go into the friendlies. And I'll show you how I've made all that money. Just in case it's something you boys and girls aren't quite aware of. And so what I've done is I've set up two friendly leagues and one friendly cup competition all at our ground. And that has brought us in all that money. 
The first friendly league had us, Everton, Palace and Villa. And as you'll see, we beat Crystal Palace. An amazing result there. Basir Humphreys and Nat Jarvis with goals. I think both of them were just on trial. And we haven't signed either of them. So it's not too much of a spoiler there. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, we had a we had a load of trialists in. I was looking at anybody and everybody to bring in. And like I say, we'll go through the transfers in a minute. And so, yeah, that was the first money-grabbing league. And as well, what you're going to notice is that my spelling is horrendous. Because what happened is I was doing this at half two, three o'clock in the morning. And at that time of night, your spelling goes to absolute garbage. And so, yeah, we've got a money-grabbing league, a moy-grabbing league, and a money-grabbing league too. So, yeah, my spelling is brilliant. The second one had us, Derby, Brighton and Bournemouth. And we didn't lose to either Derby or Brighton. So, a, a decent results there. We didn't, we didn't get spanked by anybody really, apart from Cardiff, who did come to our place and beat us 6-2. And yeah, Burnley we only lost 2-1, Brentford we only lost 2-1. And then in the cup, we lost to Brighton and we lost to Ipswich, as you would expect. And so yeah, all of them brought us in all that money. So if that's something you don't know about, do it. At, at the end of a season... Because I did this as soon as last season finished. You don't have to wait until the 1st of July or the 1st of June to arrange these. You can arrange them as soon as the season finishes. So get on it. Because the sooner you do it, the higher reputation teams I think you get. I could be wrong in that. But I've got, what, a few Premiership teams and a few Championship teams. And that's done me a whole world of good with that. And then our first one proper friendly, I want to say, was against Peterborough Sports just a few days ago. I just used that just to test out our new newest tactic. And it got us a 4-1 win. Adam Marriott scoring twice. Very, very happy with that. And Romain Mundell and Bailey Clements are two new signings. I think I showed you Mundell in the last video. But we'll have a look at him properly here. With all his attributes, he is a 18-year-old central midfielder. He's got 13 for first touch, 13 technique, vision of 13, stamina of 12, acceleration of 13, decisions of 12. So, yeah, I'm very happy with him. He's joined us from Tottenham. And Bailey Clements as well. Let's have a look at him. He is a free transfer who we got in. He was previously at Ipswich. So he's not had to move too far to come and join us. And he is a left back, 11 for crossing, 10 passing, 10 tackling, 11 for positioning, decisions of 12, concentration 13, determination of 7. I've tried to get the determination up. Most of the players I think I've brought in have got decent determination. So hopefully the squad should be a bit more determined than it was last season. And so, now we've looked at them two, let's have a look at everybody else that we've brought in. Because like I say, it's been a long one. I'm just going to go through these quickly, because we are already eight minutes in. Jesus Christ. All right, yeah, so very quickly, Levy Lang, I showed you him quickly in the last video. He's a young centre-back coming from Arsenal. Two-star current, four-star potential ability. And Dan Bowie is a centre-back, I believe. Yes, he is. 23 years old. Was previously at Cheltenham in League 2. We've brought him in on a 325 quid a week deal. And he is a current international. What country is he, is he an international for? Antigua and Barbuda. He's played 13, 13 times for them. Got himself one goal. And he looks decent. 13 heading, 13 marking, 11 tackling. Strength not the best, might have to work on that. Jumping reach as well is quite poor actually for centre-back. But as long as nobody's pinging balls into the box, if it's on the deck, he should be alright. And then after that, Mundell we've just looked at. Xavier Simmons we've got from Chelsea on a freebie. I think he's another one I showed you in the last video. 3-star current, 4-star potential ability, and that stat there, it's not highlighted, but 16 for long shots. 
that is going to be important because I do think long shots is still a bit OP on the current match engine. So, yep, we've got him in. He looks decent. How much are we paying him? £600 a week. So, yeah, you can understand why we're over the wage budget because we have spent a lot on wages. Next up is another central midfielder, Diaz Wright. He was at Colchester before coming to us. So again, hasn't had to move a million miles. He's got 10 for first touch, 12 passing, 12 teamwork, 12 for stamina. And yeah, if you guys want to have a more in-depth look at these, please do feel free to pause the video and just have a gander at them. Next one in is a guy we had on loan last season, Oli O'Dwyer from Aldershot. We've got him in on a freebie deal now. Again, 600 quid a week. He did well for us last year. He's fallen down a little bit in the pecking order, but it's good to have, uh, what's the word? Strength and depth, that's the word I'm looking for. So, yeah, we've gone for him. So, yep, he should be decent. Next up is a very good central defender, Nicola Tavares. He is 22 years old, four-star current, five-star potential ability, and we are paying 500 quid a week, which I don't think is too bad. For someone of his quality, 13, 12 and 12 for his main technical stats for a central defender. 13 aggression, 13 bravery, determination 9, decisions 10. And so yeah, very, very happy with him. Next up is a goalie from Cholton, Ashley Maynard Brewer. Now my scouts really liked him, so I signed him. And then I've brought him in on a permanent transfer. And now my assistant is not too happy with him. He says he's just about the same as the keepers we had last year. So it's going to be interesting to see who's right. The scouts or my assistant manager. And next up after him is a striker, Tom Fielding from Mansfield. 14 finishing, 14 acceleration, 12 decisions. He's going to be a poacher. He's going to be a backup to Adam Marriott. Maybe come off the bench late in games and use his acceleration to run at people and his 14 finishing to put the ball in the back of the net. And then after that, Bailey Clements, who I think I've already shown you, but let's have another look at him. Two and a half, two, three star, sorry, current ability, four star potential ability. He's going to be our main left back this season, I think. I think he looks very, very good. And then after that, Pascal Juan Estrada. He is a three-star central defensive midfielder, four-star potential ability, eight for marking, 11 for tackling, 15 for positioning, 15 for decisions, determination only of eight, a little bit worrying there, anticipation of 13. And then after that, Terrell Whitaker is a young striker, 18 years old, came to us from Tottenham again. He's got 12 finishing, 14 acceleration, 14 off the ball. And so, yeah, he's another one. Come off the bench, use his pace to run at tired defenders and hopefully put the ball in the back of the net. And then this is a guy who we are paying peanuts for. Zach Brown, 18 years old, two-star current, three-and-a-half-star potential ability, we are paying him an um, appearance fee of 40 quid and a clean seat bonus of £6 and £8. Basically means we are paying, coming out of our wage budget, £15 a week, it told me, when we signed this contract. So, yeah, very, very happy with that. And I do think he looks like another decent backup. 9 heading, 11 of tackling, concentration 10. And so, yeah, very decent signing there. And then another central defender. We went heavy on central defenders because when I was doing the season review video, uh, I noticed we had some of the worst defensive stats in the whole league. Because you know them graphs where you, where you compare yourself against the other teams? I at least understood that below the line on that screen is not good. And we was below the line for all but one of them. Of them, so yeah, I thought I would improve the defenders, and I think I have done. We've got Wiggett here, 12 heading, 11 concentration. Yep, 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 he all looks very good. I am trying to speed through this a little bit now because we are almost 15 minutes in 
This is going to be a long one, but it's the first episode of a new season. Hope you don't mind. Hope you stick around. And yet another left back, Tyreek Wilson. He is from Ireland and he's got 12 crossing, 16 acceleration, 15 pace, 11 stamina. He might be more of a wing back, I think. If we can get some of his technicals up, I think he could be a very good wing back. So yeah, that is all the players in. And if we just show you the list of everyone who's been released, Nathan Fox is gone, Kelly has gone, Cloonan unfortunately has gone, uh, Louis Swain as well, Connor Parsons, he did not want to sign a new contract with us, Ryan Fryer is gone, Lim is gone, Sonny Carey, I really did like him, but he did not like me. So, yep, he's left. Ross Barrows. I'm sorry, mate. I know you followed me on Twitter the other night. So if you are watching, I can only apologise. Do let me know down below if you are watching, Ross. And I'll, I'll see if I can keep an eye on your career going forward. But yet, yeah, unfortunately, you have gone, as has Alfie Payne. We could not sign a new contract with him. And actually, mm, he's, still, he's still on a freebie. He's still free. Hmm. That might be one to look out for later on in the season if he still can't get himself a team. But, yeah, guys, we've looked at all that. Uh, let's go into tactics, yeah? Let's go into tactics and let's go into team for today's game against Solihull Moors. And this is the team for the game. Barnes keeps his place in goal for the time being. Going to give him two to three games, see how he gets on. But if he does not perform, then we've got the man on the bench, Maynard Brewer, just waiting to take his place. So, yep, he really has got to perform. Wilson at left-back. Wiggett and Tavares are our new centre-back pairing. Seckleford keeps his place on the right-back spot. Both Seckleford and Wilson are wing-backs on support. And then on the wings, we've got David Mbala. We managed to keep him. We've signed him to a new contract, so very happy with that. He is still on the left. Diaz right and Xavier Simmons are in the middle of the midfield. Right as a deep line playmaker. Simmons as a ball winning midfielder. And Brown on the right hand side, keeping his spot. I looked all summer, couldn't really find any other right wingers that were worth bringing in to replace Brown. So hopefully Brown's going to have a good year. And then we've got Mundell as an attacking midfielder, just trying to link the midfield up with Adam Marriott, of course, keeping his place up front all on his own. But hopefully he should be okay and he can put in a similar performance to what he put in in the week in the last friendly of the summer and on the bench we've got Maynard Brewer, Clements, Estrada, Fielding and Chris Smith. Just before we do get into the game here are the board expectations for the season. They've increased a little bit from last season. Now the board want us to get into the playoffs as a minimum and they want us to get the first round of the FA Cup again and get into the third round of the FA Challenge Trophy. Not sure if I've mentioned it yet, but the media have once again made us favourites to win the league. So, yeah, no pressure. But, uh, different to last year when we was favourites, I believe it a bit more this year. I think we've got a better team than what we had last season. So I think we could be in with a shout of at least getting the playoffs. And just before we get into the game, uh, Kings Lynn versus Solihull Moors. Solihull Moors are the favourites. 6-4 to four to win the game. How have they been getting on in this save? Have they just come down? I think they have. Ooh, so could be a difficult game. You never know. Could be a difficult game. But I'm feeling confident. I think we've got a good squad. All right, here we go. And Solihull Moors are going with a very narrow formation. Very interesting one there. Might have to set us to play a bit wider and get the ball to David Mbala and Brown a bit more. And I haven't shown you the tactics, have I? I've not shown you boys the tactics. So let's have a look. These are the tactics we're going to be going for for the season. Obviously the 4-4-1-1 I showed you. But in possession, we're going for shorter passing, standard tempo, 
play through the middle, but I might just change that for today. I'm going to give it first 20 minutes, half hour, see how we get on, and then I might change it to going wider. And we're working the ball into the box, dribbling less, more disciplined, distributing the ball to fullbacks from the keeper. And when we've lost the ball, we're regrouping and holding shape when we do have the ball. But we are distributing it quickly from the keeper. And then out of possession, we're defending narrower. And we've got standard line of engagement and standard defensive line. So that is what we're going for. Let's go into the team talk. Set the opposition instructions. Assistant manager has set them to nobody. And let's go passionate. Come on lads, show me what you can do. No reaction. Still no reaction. Come on. Hey, people have reacted at last. Huzzah. Alright then, prediction. I've been getting predictions wrong for ages on here. So I'm I'm going to go 2-0. Two 2-0 nil. Two nil us, I think. I'm feeling confident. Let's go. 15 minutes in, first highlight of the season. Mundell's got the ball, goes back to Seckleford. Seckleford with the cross and the keepers had to punch it out of the pitch there. A little bit of a panic there from their keeper. And we've got a corner ball which is going to be taken by the main man in Bala. He crosses it in and they head it away. And is Wicket going to get there first? He is. He's showing a little bit of pace there. That's very nice. Alright guys, we're 22 minutes in. Not a lot has happened. So we are going to go and play wider, try and get the ball out wide to Mbala, and see if he can cause some damage to this team who are playing very, very narrow. Oh, just before half time, nothing else has happened, but now Raheem Seckleford is injured, and we haven't got a right back to replace him with on the bench. Whoops. Uh, it's going to have to be Bailey Clements, I think. Or have we got anyone who can play on the right-hand side of midfield? No, we haven't. Bailey Clements, it is. He comes on and wow, he does not like playing there, does he, people? Oh, let's hope he's going to be okay. Let's hope he's going to be all right playing there. Let's go confirm the sub. And yeah, maybe something might happen before half time. You never know. Nope, nothing else has happened. It is still nil nil. We've had eight shots to their five. We've both had three shots on target, but we have dominated the possession like I was hoping we would with the shorter passing. We are dominating it, but we're just not doing anything with it. Might be worth trying to hit early crosses, I think. Because rather than trying to work the ball into the box, yeah, let's go for that. And let's go just normal amount of width. And yeah, leave it at that. And see what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. Uh, what shall I say? Unlucky boys? Only one person is motivated by that. That's part of the problem with having a new squad. You kind of have to take your time before they all start reacting to you. But now we have got a few. So let's go start the second half. Please, just one goal to win it. That's all I want. Alright guys, half an hour left to go in the game. We've just made the one change. Romain Mundell is now off for Tom Fielding to make his debut. Not sure if I showed you him. I think I might have done. But yep, there he is, just in case I didn't. And yep guys, so hopefully two up top might get us a goal. You never know. Oh, finally a highlight. Ten minutes left. It's us with the ball. Wilson with the cross. Goes to Fielding and he's offside. Ah, oh, what a nice way to end the game that would have been. It was a very good cross, though. It was a very good cross. Wilson hit it, and apart from Fielding being offside, it was right onto his foot. Hmm, well, that's not how you want to start a new season, is it, people? At least we haven't lost. That's all I can say. It's finished nil-nil. We've had 14 shots to their seven. Four on target to their three. 57% of the ball. So, yeah, decent. Decent performance. I think we played quite well. And judging by those stats, we did. And so, yeah. Nil-nil. Decent start to the season. We've not lost. Let's go. Unlucky, boys. And most, a couple of them are motivated. Um, impressed with your defending. Um... 
I appreciate your efforts and I appreciate I appreciate your efforts up front and so guys that is where we are gonna leave it but what I do want is I want your input on this so in the comment section down below let me know where you want us to come back because I, I'm thinking of coming back for the FC United game in what what is that in one two three games time so do we do FC United as a single game on its own or do we do FC United and Boston together let me know either in the comments or on Twitter let me know what you would like to see in the next video do we do FC United on its own or Boston United again and FC United and so yep guys that is where we are going to leave it for today. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please do pop a massive thumbs up down below. Every like really does help the video and help the channel and the series and me out. So please do pop a like down below. You know what? I've seen other YouTubers setting like targets. So you know what? Can we get to 10 likes for this video? If we can get to 10 likes for the series as a whole and for the video, please do do it. So 10 likes, that's what I want. As well as that, subscribe if you're new for more Football Manager 2020 content. I've got an experiment planned that's going to be out at some point this week. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. And yet, follow me on Twitter at Bad Jokes Gaming, and go and check out the Passion for FM website. There's some awesome downloads, guides, resources, all that good stuff over on that website. And get involved in the Passion for FM Discord. I'm in there every day. So if you ever want to chat to Bad Jokes, just send me a message in there, and I will always get back to you. And so, yeah, guys, that is pretty much everything. I shall see you tomorrow. Bye.